सहनावतु सहनाओ भुनक्तु सह वीर्यम करवावहै तेजस्विनावधी तमस्तु माविद्विशावहै ओम शांते 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 वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्यकोटि समप्रभ निर्विघ्न कुरु मे देवा सर्वकार्येशु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामिणी विद्यारंभं करिष्यामि सिद्धेर्भवत मे सदा समस्त जन कल्याणे निरत करुणा नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधीर All right. So we are in the Mahabharata, and last week we went through Bhishma Parva. What happened in Bhishma Parva? So Bhishma was defeated. He was defeated by Arjuna's arrows, and he revealed the secret of how he was going to die. he revealed the secret of how he was going to die to the pandavas and so they had put shikandi in front of bhishma and he lay down his weapons and arjuna shot, shot those arrows at bhishma and many many arrows were shot and what happened was bhishma fell and when bhishma fell it was almost easier to imagine a sky without a sun or a midnight sky without stars it's easier to imagine the world like that rather than the falling of bhishma and he did not fall into a ground but he fell on a bed of arrows and when he fell everyone stopped everyone just stopped in the middle of the battlefield because this was a great warrior Yes he made his mistakes he had his wrong doings but they admired that he was great warrior and everybody just paused to bend down and pay their respects to him and he then asks for a a pillow and arjuna gives him a nice pillow of arrows and he asks for water and so arjuna it, he invokes one mantra and by that mantra a stream of water comes trickling into bhishma's mouth and bhishma is full of praises for arjuna and he tells duryodhana don't you know that arjuna is the only one who knows this incantation and don't you know that arjuna is nara and lord krishna is narayana don't you know that they are here and they are undefeatable stop this war now let my death be the end of this war give back half of the kingdom to yudhishthira we don't need to keep fighting any more and bhishma goes on and he tells this to duryodhana and he says i tried so hard to persuade you but you wouldn't listen and of course duryodhana still doesn't listen in the night when everyone went home there was one more visitor that came to bhishma he came and he laid his arms in front of bhishma 
And he says, oh, Bhishma, grandfather, I seek your blessing. Bhishma looks to see who it is. And it's none other than Karna. And Bhishma says, you know, I am your grandfather. You are not Radheya's. You are not Radheya. You are not Radha's son. You are Kunti's son. And Karna says, I know. And Bhishma says, give this up. Give it up and go to the Pandavas. Go to your brothers. Karna said, I cannot. I've lived for so long in, under the house of the Kauravas and I cannot leave Duryodhana now. And Bhishma said, I'm so sorry that you will have to go through this. And Karna says, I know. I know what the outcome is. I know as long as Krishna is there with Arjuna, they cannot be defeated. But nevertheless, you please bless me. And Bhishma said, you know, I used to insult you because you would harm the Pandavas and you would speak ill of them. But I know how strong of a warrior you are, Karna. And if this is something that you want to do, then I bless you. Go and fight. And so Karna takes his blessings from Bhishma and he is now going to war. Now, what happens with Bhishma? First, we have to see what is his bed of arrows. You know, when Bhishma was lying in that bed of arrows, Duryodhana called so many people to heal him because it was so, so painful. And Bhishma said, no, send them all home. Give them, you know, whatever's due to them, but send them all home. Because the symbolism of this bed of arrows is that at a higher spiritual plane, one accepts their karma. He knew that as a warrior, and because of his past history, his life would flash before him. And he knew that there were times when he just kept quiet. There are times when he could have stood up, when he could have done something more, but he didn't. He knew that he sided with Duryodhana and he knew he fought on the side of Adharma. And because he knew all of these things and he knew what he had to go through, he accepted this bed of arrows. He knew that this is what he deserved in his life and he welcomed it. When a person becomes a little bit more spiritually evolved, when negative karma comes to express in our lives, we take it like the bed of arrows because we know that at some point, in some place, in some time, we did something to deserve that. And Bhishma knew and therefore he laid in that bed of arrows. But he did not give up his life. He wanted to wait for Uttarayana or what very well we know today as Makar Sankranti, where the sun makes its way up north. As a symbol of, he wanted to wait to gain that knowledge, to gain that truth before he left his body. Because after all, he had that Ichamriti. And of course, he wanted to see Lord Krishna more than anything. And so even if he was lying on that bed, he was still very much alive, in pain, but alive. And later on, we will come to see exactly what happens in this bed of arrows. So Bhishma Parva is now concluded. And now they have to go find someone to fight this, someone to be the commander of the army. And so now that Karna has picked up his weapons, he goes to Duryodhana. And Duryodhana says, who will be the commander of our army? Who can lead us? Who would be capable as Bhishma? And Karna says, there's only one person that I can think of. And that is Dronacharya. Hence, the next Parva that we enter is called Drona Parva. Because after Bhishma fell in the bed of arrows, Dronacharya took up being the commander of the Kaurava army. And so the war again started. 
So Karna picks up his weapons. Dronacharya was coronated. And day 11 of the war starts. What happens in day 11? We start to see a side of Dronacharya which we have not seen before. All of a sudden, he goes to Duryodhana and he wants to please him. He says, Duryodhana, I want to do something to please you. And Duryodhana said, capture Yudhishthira. And Drona said, if you think we can defeat Yudhishthira, we won't be able to as long as Arjuna and Krishna are there. Duryodhana says, no, no, capture Yudhishthira because I want to play another game of dice with him. We might not win this war, but if you capture him, we can play another game of dice. And when we play that game of dice, I'll make sure we win and he gets sent for exile again. What an evil trick Duryodhana wanted. And Drona said he would do it. And when the spies of the Pandava found this out, they were very, very upset that Dronacharya would even think of something like this. And so they all said, whatever happens, we will protect Yudhishthira. And so all of them gathered to protect Yudhishthira. But people kept on luring Arjuna. They kept on luring Arjuna and hence everybody had to be very, very aware of Yudhishthira. One time, everybody was, you know, Drona almost, he almost, almost had Yudhishthira. But luckily, Arjuna came in time to rescue him. And many such times would happen in this war. The next day, Arjuna again was lured. There was this group called Trigaritas under this uh, fellow named Susharma. And they took this oath that they would kill Arjuna or be killed by Arjuna. And they were these really, really foul brothers, groups of them. And so they said on day 12, we're going to lure Arjuna. We're going to take him away from the battlefield so that Yudhishthira can be captured. And so on that day 12, Arjuna spent so much of his time with all of these, these Trigartas. And they were so, so persistent. And finally, Arjuna used his Astra, where he invoked a thousand Krishnas and a thousand Arjunas on the field and everybody was so shocked but they still kept fighting. Meanwhile in the main battlefield there was this Bhagadatta with his elephant who was just causing havoc in the whole battlefield and Arjuna could hear all of that but he had to keep challenging these Trigartas and so what happened was he challenged them for quite some time and then he made it just in time to the battlefield to go against that Bhagadatta and his elephant. And this Bhagadatta was very, very strong because he had a goad and this was a very powerful astra that he had. And as long as he had that, he wouldn't be able to be defeated. So Bhagavan Krishna takes Arjuna in front of him and this Bhagadatta hurls so many things at Arjuna, but of course Arjuna is able to break it and go against it. But at some point, this Bhagadatta, he hurls that gold at Arjuna. And this was the Vaishnava Astra. And whoever he hurled this at would be destroyed. And so what happened the minute he hurled it, everyone looked at Arjuna because they thought that this was his destruction. And just when that gold was coming to Arjuna, Lord Krishna gets in front and he puts his chest in front and he receives that astra. And as he receives that astra, it turns into a garland of flowers. And thus Arjuna is saved. And Lord Krishna says, that is actually my astra that he took from me because of his tapasya. And so now Arjuna was able to challenge this Bhagadatta 
because he was relieved of his very strong astra and that Bhagadatta and his elephant were completely destroyed. And this happened on the 12th day. Now the Kauravas were just really, really panicked and saying, what is this? You know, how come the Pandavas keep defeating us? And Duryodhana even went to Dronacharya and said, what is this? Why are you fighting so softly? Why aren't you doing anything? And so Dronacharya said, don't worry. Tomorrow I will do something. And one of the best fighters will fall down. And this was day 13. What did Dronacharya do? This was one of the most painful days in the Mahabharata war. Dronacharya planned a vyuha called Chakra Vyuha. Now you all know in the Mahabharata, they had different war formations and that in itself is a study. <laughs> that in itself is a study, the different war formations that they take. So Dronacharya had planned a chakra vyuha, which was very, very difficult to penetrate. It was like a very round vyuha. And there were only very few people who could penetrate it. And of course, Krishna, Arjuna knew, but the plan was to get the Trigartas again to lure Arjuna into fighting so that he would be away from the battlefield. Pradyumna also knew how to penetrate that, but he wasn't there. And there was only one other person, Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu, who was Arjuna's son. He was 16 years old. He knew how to penetrate this chakra vyuha, but he didn't know how to come out of it. And so it was a very, very painful sight that day when Yudhishthira had no choice Yudhishthira had no choice, but he said, now the chakra vyuha is standing and there's only one person that, that can go through it and it is Abhimanyu. And I know it's going to be a very difficult thing, but that chakra vyuha was just too, too strong. It was too strong and it was wreaking havoc. The Kaurava army was just wreaking havoc and nobody could penetrate it. So Abhimanyu said, I will go. I can go to this Chakra Vyuha. I know how to go in, but I don't know how to come out. And Yudhishthira, Nakula, Sahadeva, Bhima, all of them, they looked at each other and they said, you just go in and we will be right there after you. And Abhimanyu said, okay. So Arjuna and Krishna were lured away. Abhimanyu started to enter this chakra vyuha. Now, the minute that Abhimanyu entered, they said that day he was way greater than Arjuna. He was just defeating the army by the thousands. People were getting defeated all over the place and he made his way so, so quickly in the chakra vyuha. He sped like lightning and Dronacharya was so nervous. He looked at Duryodhana, he looked at Kripacharya. And he said, if they keep doing this, if he keeps doing this, our army will be gone. Meanwhile, Yudhishthira, Bhima, Nakula, Sahadeva, Drishta, Dhyumna, all of them tried to get into the Chakra Vyuha. But there was one person guarding them. And that person was Jayatrata. Now remember that Jayatrata had a boon. When he captured Draupadi and Bhima took him after that and cut up his hair, that Jayatrata, he did so much tapasya, very rajasic tapasya. And he got a boon from Lord Shiva that one point in time in the Mahabharata war, when Krishna and Arjuna are not there, you will be able to defeat the Pandavas. And it was on that day of the Chakra Vyuha. And so because of Jayatrata's boon, nobody could go in 
through the chakra vyuha, not Nakula, Sahadeva, Yudhishthira, Bhima, nobody could go through Jayatrata. He was just formidable. He was just so strong. And as a result, Abhimanyu was on his own. Now imagine this boy of 16 years old in that thousand million army even inside that chakra vyuha and this boy was a threat he was a threat people were scared of him and this abhimanyu makes it all the way into the innermost circle of the chakra vyuha and who are who is in the innermost circle of this chakra vyuha Ashwatham, Dronacharya, Kripacharya, Duryodhana, Kritavarma, and the son of Dushasana. Six of these were called as Maharatikas. Means they could fight with so many people. Six of them surrounded this one Abhimanyu. And this one Abhimanyu were a threat. He was a threat to six of them. And they all looked at each other and they said, there's no stopping him today. There's no stopping Abhimanyu. He's so strong. And Drona looks at Karna and he says, the only way he can be defeated if he's without a bow and he's without his charioteer and horses. So you go from behind him and you break his bow. And Karna went behind Abhimanyu secretly and he breaks Abhimanyu's bow. And Abhimanyu was just shocked because that was completely against the battle rule, the, the laws of the war. They broke the law. And as they did that, they killed Abhimanyu's horses, they broke his chariot, and Abhimanyu looked at all six of them and said, come fight with me one by one. And he had his sword still, he had his shield. He said, one by one, you come and fight with me. But all of them were fighting together. They broke his sword, they broke his shield. He finally took his chakra of his chariot and he whirled it and he whirled it and he said fight with me one by one I can fight with you but they still all went at him and Abhimanyu fell down and he fainted and just as he was about to rise up the son of Dushasana hit Abhimanyu and he never rose up again and this was not a fair means. This was not a war battle. This was considered murder. And when this happened, the Kaurava army was in shouts of joy and screaming and so incredibly happy. And the Pandava army were trembling inside because they knew they knew that Abhimanyu must have died. And sure enough, they got that news. They all retired to their tents at night. And at night, Arjuna finally came back with his battle with the Trigartas. Finally, he vanquished them and they wouldn't do anything to him anymore. And so Arjuna came back to the tents of the Pandavas and he started seeing such evil omens. And he said, Krishna, I'm not feeling well. Something is in the air. Something is not right. And Krishna says, let's, let's go. And he goes into the tent and he sees Yudhishthira, Nakula, Sahadeva, Pima, but nobody would look at him in the eye. And he says, where is my son Abhimanyu? Every day, every night after battle, he comes to me, he greets me, you know, he comes to me. And none of them could look at Arjuna. Finally, Yudhishthira said, Arjuna, I killed Abhimanyu. 
And Arjuna just freaked out and he said, what do you mean? Don't tell me. I heard that today there was a chakra vyuha. Don't tell me that you put my son in that chakra vyuha. And Yudhishthira said, I had no choice. It was just too strong and none of us could withstand it. None of us could withstand it. it otherwise, our, all, our whole army would have been crushed. And Arjuna said, there must have been some foul play. Tell me what happened. And they all told him that it was Jayatrata. They wanted to go in and save Abhimanyu, but this Jayatrata was too formidable and that he was undefeatable. And those six people, Maharatikas, they murdered Abhimanyu. And Arjuna and Lord Krishna said, Arjuna, please don't get mad at your brothers. Imagine what they are feeling also. And Arjuna said, this is nonsense. And he twanged his Gandiva. He said, tomorrow in the battlefield, no matter what happens, I will slay that Jayatrata by sunset. And the Pandavas encampment roared with thunder. And he said, I don't care who he's protected by, but tomorrow that Jayatrata will be slain by me. And so the Kauravas were wondering what happened. Why is there so much sound of, of battle cries in the Pandava encampment? And they sent their spies and they found out about Jayatrata. And meanwhile, Duryodhana said, no matter what happens tomorrow, we are going to protect Jayatrata. And Jayatrata said, I'm just so scared. I'm so afraid. I might as well run away. Duryodhana said, don't you see what we did to Abhimanyu was very adharmic. Arjuna will not leave you alone, but you will be protected by all of us. Kauravas. And Drona said, I'm going to plan a special viewha tomorrow three layers of vyuha formation that nobody should be able to penetrate. So Jayatrata was fine. And meanwhile, Arjuna said, Bhagavan Krishna, you please prepare everything and tomorrow we will fight Jayatrata. Bhagavan Krishna was just thinking now what to do. And he, so, he told Arjuna, okay, you go to sleep. And he called his charioteer, Daruka. He said, Daruka, I will not, not let Arjuna's uh, oath become false. You, you, take, you take my chariot, you take everything there. If I blow my conch in a certain note, Rishabha note, that means you come. That means you have to come and we will do whatever it takes to defeat Jayatrata. So Daruka said, okay. Meanwhile, Bhagavan Krishna had to break the news to Subhadra because Arjuna said, I don't know how to tell her. And Bhagavan Krishna broke the news to Subhadra and she just could not believe how her son passed away. She could not believe it. She said, how is it that with you and with Arjuna, how did he pass? And Lord Krishna explained that it was very unfair means but they will do the best that they can. And so he also consoled Draupadi and he said, now both of you must console Uttara. Uttara is Abhimanyu's wife. She also must be consoled. And so they all consoled everybody. And the next day of battle was now day 14. And this day 14 was a very, very difficult day. What happens is this Dronacharya, he says, he, he makes this three, threefold view. He half shakata, half like a wheel, half chakra, and then half like a needle. And he makes this threefold view. And what happens is Arjuna, he goes, he doesn't even want to waste any time. He goes through this view. He crosses the first vyuha and the second vyuha, Dronacharya is there. And he tells Dronacharya, I need to pass through you. And Dronacharya said, you come fight me. 
And Lord Krishna said, don't waste your time fighting. You go. And Arjuna does one pradakshina to Dronacharya. And he goes and he goes through the Vyuha. And he defeats so many warriors. He goes very, very fast with Bhagavan Krishna. And he goes in and through the Vyuhas trying to make his way to that Jayatrata. But this Jayatrata is so well protected. Meanwhile, in the battlefield, before Arjuna left, Arjuna said, please protect Yudhishthira at all costs because this Dronacharya still wants to kidnap this Yudhishthira. So Satyaki was there protecting Yudhishthira and Bhima also. But meanwhile, Yudhishthira was getting so nervous because it was already becoming, you know, like a little bit dark. And they hadn't heard the twang of Arjuna's Gandiva. And they hadn't heard the blowing of Sri Krishna's conch. So they said, it's getting really dark. It's getting, you know, almost, almost getting dark. Satyaki, you go. And so this Satyaki says, Bhima, then you have to watch Yudhishthira. And this Satyaki goes and penetrates through the Vyuha. And it is said that day, Satyaki was actually Arjuna's student and Arjuna's friend. He was even more terrifying than Arjuna. It is said that this Sat Satyaki, he wreaked havoc in the whole entire army and he went through all of the Vyuhas trying to catch up with Arjuna and help him with Jayatrata. Now, the time Yudhishthira he kept looking, looking, looking at the sun and it was just getting a little bit, going to get a little bit darker, a little bit darker. And he tells Bhima, now you go. I'm not hearing anything. You go. And if you go and if you see Bhagavan Krishna and if you see Arjuna, you please roar. And if you see Satyaki, you roar and let me know that they're okay. And Bhima tells Drishtadhyuna, you must stay with Yudhishthira. You cannot cannot leave him alone. And so Bhima now goes. And Bhima goes through all of the Vyuhas and Bhima also wreaks havoc that so many of Dhritarashtra's uh, sons are defeated by Bhima on that day. They're destroyed in fact by Bhima on that day. And so Bhima also, he goes through that army. And meanwhile, Bhagavan Sri Krishna sees that, you know, that this uh, Arjuna is very, very close to Jayatrata, but he might not make it. He might not make it. it it's already going to become sunset and he might not make it. What does Bhagavan Krishna do? Bhagavan Krishna, he, with his power of Maya, as though covers the sun and makes it appear as though the sun has set. And he tells Arjuna, Hold your bow, hold your arrow. And that Jayatrata, when he comes, he's almost coming face to face to see. Because Arjuna said, if Jayatrata is not defeated by sunset, then Arjuna himself will enter into fire. He himself will enter into fire. So Jayatrata saw that the sun set and he wanted to see what was going on with Arjuna. And just when Jayatrata comes in front of Arjuna, Lord Krishna removes his veil and the sun was still there. And he tells Arjuna, shoot at Jayatrata, shoot. And Arjuna shot at Jayatrata. He shot at Jayatrata's head. And meanwhile, Lord Krishna says, keep his head up in the sky. Keep his head up in the sky and you must aim it towards his father who is sitting and meditating. Aim it towards his lap. And at that time, Arjuna didn't know what was happening, why Lord Krishna is saying all of this. But he shot that arrow to Jayatrata's head and he pointed that direction to his father's lap. And when Jayatrata's head landed on his father's lap, his father's head also shattered into thousand pieces. What happened? It just so happened that Jayatrata had a boon 
Lord Krishna later tells Arjuna that whoever shoots his head, their head will also break into a thousand pieces. That's why Lord Krishna told Arjuna to do that. And Arjuna listened and surrendered in that moment to Lord Krishna. And that surrender made all the difference. This event with Jayatrata is very, very significant because, you know, as seekers, we will have to face so many challenges in life. Just like this challenge of trying to get to Jayatrata before sunset. We have to face so many challenges in life. But imagine if we knew in life all the challenges that we have to face. Imagine if we knew all of the challenges we have to face for the next 50 years. Our heads would shatter, isn't it? It would shatter into a thousand pieces because there would be so many challenges. The beauty that Lord Krishna is trying to teach us is at the right time, our challenges will present themselves. And when they do present themselves with that very challenge, the solution is revealed if we pay attention. Every right point in our life, that challenge will come and that challenge will come with a solution. No challenge comes because just like that, it comes to those who are ready and that challenge is always there to make us stronger. And this is what happened. And the beauty about Arjuna is that he surrendered to Lord Krishna. Whatever Lord Krishna said, he paid attention and he just did it in the heat of the moment. In the heat of the moment, Lord Krishna just said, shoot his head. Make sure it doesn't land on the floor. Make sure you aim it towards his father's lap who's meditating. Every single step of the way, he listened. And therefore, on that very day, that task of Jayatrata, of defeating Jayatrata, which seemed so impossible because it was so, he was protected by so many people, even that impossible task was made possible. And that day, Satyaki and Arjuna they destroyed seven Akshrohinis of the Kaurava army. And that was a very, very difficult day for the Kauravas that Jayatrata was finally vanquished. Now, they were so, so upset. They were so upset. And what happens is Drona, he just doesn't know what to do anymore. He, because Duryodhana keeps, you know, uh, talking down at him. Duryodhana keeps coming down at them and saying, you know, you're not even doing your best. You're not going to do anything for the, these Pandavas. You're not going to defeat them. And Drona, he gets so fed up that he loses all code of Dharma. Dronacharya loses all code of Dharma that on that 14th day, he says, let's fight at night. You know, the war always ended after sunset. After sunset, everyone took a break. And as you, you know, some of you are saying um, how that king of Udupi, he also, you know, fed everybody and how exactly the right amount of food was cooked every day. And how he knew that was Lord Krishna would eat certain boiled peanuts and then he would count how many peanuts Lord Krishna ate. And if it was 10, that means 10,000 people would die the next day. So, you know, like after sunset in the war times is when everybody rested. Everybody ate. Everybody, you know, was, they had some time to rejuvenate. They would do their pujas. The animals would be taken care of. Everybody would be taken care of. But this Dronacharya, he lost all sense of dharma. He said, now forget about it. Let's fight in the night also. And so night fighting started. And they couldn't even tell properly who was fighting who. Finally, they uh, 
put all torches and lamps and they started fighting at night. Now, in this 14th night, a very other sad, also happy thing happens is, and you know why sad and happy, that everybody is fighting like anything and they are so, so tired. And this Karna is just going at it. And the Pandava army is being clobbered down. And meanwhile, whenever Karna has a chance to face Arjuna, Lord Krishna always redirects Arjuna somewhere else. He always redirects Arjuna somewhere else. And this night, Ghatotkacha was fighting immensely. Now, you know, Ghatotkacha was a Rakshasa. And in the night, their uh, fighting gets more and more elevated, these Rakshasas. And he defeated that Alambusa Rakshasa of the Kauravas. And so many people, also this relatives of Bakasura and all of them fought against Ghatotkacha. And he kept defeating everybody. And this Ghatotkacha in that night was just terrible. He was just Terrible. He kept on fighting and beating everybody. Karna came against him. The Duryodhana came against him. So many people came against him. But he was just unstoppable. Nobody could stand against Kathotkacha. Finally, everyone went to Karna. And they told Karna, they said, Kathotkacha is unstoppable. You have to do something. You have something with you. And that something is the Shakti. You have that Shakti which Indra Devata gave you. When you gave away your Kundala and your Kavacha, Indra Devata gave you that Shakti. Use it against Katotkacha. Now Karna knew there was no choice. He had to use that Shakti against Katotkacha. And Indra's words stung his mind that you can use this Shakti only on one person, one time. And after that, it will come back to me. And on that night, Karna, he threw his Shakti on Gatot Kacha. And Gatot Kacha was killed by Karna. And you as Katotkacha was dying, you know what he did? He made his body so big because he had all these Rakshasa powers. He made his body so big that he fell on one Akshohini of the Kauravas. Even when he was dying, he did that. Now, when he was dying, Bhima was heartbroken. Yudhishthira was heartbroken. All of the Pandavas just stood there with their hearts stopped. And Lord Krishna gets up and he dances with joy. And everyone wonders, what happened? Why is Lord Krishna smiling? Why is Lord Krishna dancing? And they ask him, Arjuna asks him, what are you doing? Lord Krishna says, now, now we will win. And you know, Arjuna says, what do you mean? Lord Krishna says, listen, Karna is very powerful. The minute that Duryodhana said, we can win this war just with Karna, I knew he was right. Karna is Surya's son. And with that Shakti, Arjuna, he would have killed you. And that's why I was so, so careful not to bring you in front of him during the war. I tried to avoid it at as far as possible. And you know, as Sanjaya is uh, narrating this to Dhritarashtra, apparently every day, Karna, Duryodhana, Shakuni, Dushasan, they would have this conversation. Today, Karna would, you know, use his Shakti against Arjuna. Today, Karna would use his Shakti against Arjuna. But for some reason, Karna kept forgetting. And Lord Krishna tells Arjuna, I had to take it away from his memory that he had that Shakti. Because as long as he had that Shakti, he would not be able to be defeated. And now 
his shakti is gone all my worries are gone now only you arjuna will have to defeat karna and it is here that lord krishna says lord krishna tells arjuna that certain people i and we had to defeat so that they would not be part and parcel with the kauravas like ekalavya lord krishna said i had to defeat him so he wouldn't be part of the kauravas jarasandha also had to be defeated by all of us so that he wouldn't be part of the kauravas now our way is clear and lord krishna was happy at the death of katotkacha and now so what happens is day 14 night 14 rather arjuna says this is too much everybody take a break right here just let's just sleep let's sleep in the battlefield let's take a break because they were just exhausted and the next day day 15 happened day 15 of this war dronacharya was just unstoppable unbeatable he was going after everybody and dronacharya he had as i said lost all sense of adharma first of all that chakra vyuha with abhima knew that six of them against one young boy and that do stand he told karna from the back you shoot his bow and you break it then this dronacharya he started fighting at night he broke all the rules of sun you know sunset where people were supposed to rest and rejuvenate he said let's fight at night not only that but dronacharya began to use divine astras on regular soldiers and if you remember the rules of war you can use astras but also on somebody who knows how to counter astras you're not supposed to use it on regular soldiers and not only that he agreed to capture yudhishthira for another game of dice so dronacharya just he was his adharma was out of control absolutely out of control and on that 15th day he was destroying the army of the pandavas like anything using his divine astras against the soldiers that didn't know how to use astras and he was just tired and he was just going at it with everybody and lord krishna said this is too much we will have to do something and so lord krishna said we will have to we will have to tell him a lie dronacharya in when yudhishthira asked for blessings dronacharya said i can be defeated if i hear some devastating news from a credible source and lord krishna said today is the day we will have to do that and so bhima went to the field and he killed an elephant who is called ashwatthama and you know that ashwatthama is also the name of the son of dronacharya so bhima said you know he killed this elephant and he announces in front of dronacharya ashwatthama hata ashwatthama is dead and dronacharya thinks about it but he still keeps fighting with drishtadyumna because he cannot believe that his son ashwatthama would be dead his son ashwatthama is a chiranjeevi which means he has eternal life he's immortal so he uh, he's confused but he doesn't really believe it and he keeps fighting with drishta drishta dhyumna and you know drishta dhyumna is supposed to be the cause of drona's death and so they keep fighting and they keep fighting and finally you know the sky the voice from the heavens came and said to dronacharya drop your weapons it is time for you to go it is time for you to leave this world why are you still fighting why are you still going on that voice from the heavens came and he still you know kept fighting then finally he goes to yudhishthira 
And he asks Yudhishthira, tell me the truth. I need to hear it from you. Is Ashwatthama dead? And so Yudhishthira tells him, Ashwatthama is dead. And then as very softly, Yudhishthira says the elephant, but that soft sound of Yudhishthira couldn't be heard because all of the war sounds were heard. And it is said after that point in time, Yudhishthira's chariot, which always floated above the ground a few inches, came to the ground. And when this happened, Dronacharya was devastated. He was really, really devastated. And he said he's dropping his weapons. He doesn't want to live anymore. And, you know, at least for Bhishma, when Bhishma in his, was lying in his bed of arrows, he said, you know what? Make peace. When Drona dropped his weapons, he said, safeguard yourself. And Drishta Dhyumna was there. And the Pandavas thought, okay, now Dronacharya has dropped his weapons. We can capture him. We can take him. They weren't really thinking we will kill him. But Drishta Dhyumna knew he was made. He was born from the fire sacrifice of Drupada. And therefore, he had to kill him. So this Drishta Dhyumna, he cuts the head of Drona and Dronacharya passes away. And when Dronacharya passes away, everyone is equally shocked because this Dronacharya, who was a mighty warrior, was infallible. He also fell. And the Kauravas felt a very, very heavy thing in their heart. And they didn't know what to do hereafter. Now, let us look at Yudhishthira. <coughs> this episode is very, very controversial in some books, in some places, some texts. So many people read it differently. But I found a very beautiful commentary and in my own also deep reflection, thinking about what Yudhishthira's action is. Yudhishthira's action, first of all, that lie was said by Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna told him, you must tell this lie because right now dharma is at risk. There is so much adharma going on. And if you do not do that, this Dronacharya will vanquish the rest of your army by this afternoon. The conditions, everything is getting just way worse. There is no other goal. This is the way that Drona said he would be defeated. And therefore, Yudhish, he tells Yudhishthira, you say this. And, and later on, later on in the Mahabharata, Bhagavan Krishna also gives that story that, you know, there were uh, people who were violent robbers who were after some innocent people. And there was this man who knew, but he took a vow to always tell the truth. And when the robbers asked him, where, which way did the innocent people go? And so this man told them the right way. And those robbers harassed the innocent people. And because of that, that man had to spend some time in Naraka, in the lower worlds. And so Lord Krishna later on goes to say this story, telling us that dharma is very subtle. Its ways are very subtle. If we see what and all Dronacharya had done, how much a dharma he had done, then if this is what needed or what was required to bring back the Pandavas, then it had to be done. Now, the question is, why did Yudhishthira's chariot go to the ground? If this was a noble lie, why did his chariot fall to the ground? 
why did it fall? So many, many also people I talk about this, but one very subtle point is, again, it comes in the sense of the ego. Yudhishthira had always taken a vow of truthfulness. This was ever since he was a very young boy, you know, and uh, there's also that incident where in, in that Gurukula, Dronacharya asks everybody, did everyone get the lesson? And Yudhishthira kept saying, no, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And Drona said, how can you not get the lesson? Yudhishthira said, I haven't practiced it yet. Only when I practice it, then I get it. You know, so he was very, very honest and very truthful. Now, he had that slight ego that he was the doer, that he was the doer, that he was the one telling this lie that he was the one affecting the situation. But actually, none of us are doers, we are only instruments. We are actually only instruments of Bhagavan. And it is when we are tuned up to that divine will, things get revealed to us. And we are able to act as instruments in this world to carry on Dharma. But the minute you and I feel like we are the doer. We are the ones who say things. We are the ones who, who cause something to happen. The minute that you and I have that ego, that makes us fall. What made Yudhishthira's chariot fall, one of the things is that he felt that he was a doer. He felt that he was the one saying all of these things, doing all of these things. He felt that sense of doership when everyone knows he and all of us are just instruments. We all know that in this whole war, Bhagavan Krishna could have just snapped his fingers and everything would have disappeared. We all know that. But Bhagavan Krishna chooses to make us instruments so that we become pure, so that we learn, so that we evolve. Otherwise, if he just did everything with a snap of his fingers, then we would never know. We would never evolve and we would never learn. And so this is why Yudhishthira's chariot falls to the ground. Now, Ashwatthama is actually alive and he gets the news that his father Dronacharya dies. What does Ashwatthama do? That we will see next week. Okay? So this week, it's all about Dronacharya and how the battle happened in his presence. But the, what is the most important takeaway today? With Bhagavan in our lives, even the impossible becomes possible. The slaying of Bhishma, the slaying of Bhagadatta and his elephant, the slaying of Jayatratha before sunset, the slaying of Dronacharya. How could all of these things happen? It's only because of the grace of Bhagavan. When Bhagavan is our charioteer, even the impossible, that becomes possible. Even the Karna using his Shakti, that was so impossible. But that became possible. Hmm? So this, you know, story of war, this one beating this one, that one beating that one. Don't get lost in that. The main purport is because Bhagavan Krishna was by their side, victory happened. 